Greetings, this is Earthman from EarthmanSoil.com. God bless you guys, and I hope you're doing well today. We're going to continue to talk about plant growth promoting bacteria and microbes and why they are needed in your organic gardens and grow rooms. They free up locked up or, uh, organic and natural nutrients in your soil, making them plant food ready. And as we are learning, they do so much more than that. Today, we're going to learn about our new bacteria, Thiobacillus thioxidin, sulfur and zinc mobilizer. So let's go ahead and take a look at the role of sulfur for plants. It's a macronutrient. It's the fourth most used nutrient by your plant. It plays a big part in your plant's production of and structure of proteins, amino acids, and functioning enzymes. It also plays an important part of your plant's defense against environmental stress and insects and pathogens. Also, it helps with the formation of chlorophyll. It also helps with the synthesis of plant oils and terpenes, and it helps your plant's overall nutritional value and genetic density and size. So what happens when your plant don't get enough sulfur? Sulfur deficiency, what does it look like? Resembles nitrogen deficiency, such as leaves becoming light pale yellow or a very light green. Unlike nitrogen deficiency though, it starts with the younger leaves first, which will show with the tips of the leaves turning brown and then working their way back. The plant will become small and spindly with short slender, slender stalks and sometimes purple spots on top of the leaves and on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and look at some organic and natural sources for sulfur fertilizer. Jimson is a good one. One of my favorite, azomite, that covers a lot of micronutrients needed. Chicken manure compost. Also, a good one is rock dust, langbanite, sulfate of potash, and Epsom salt is a good one to have because it has magnesium and it has sulfur. Now let's look at zinc for plants. First of all, it's a micronutrient, meaning your plant doesn't need as much, but it does need it. Zinc activates enzymes that are responsible for the synthesis of certain proteins. It's used in the formation of chlorophyll and some carbohydrate production and the conversion of starch to sugars in plant tissue, which helps plants withstand cold and hot temperatures. It's involved in hormone production and internode elongation. It also helps boost the plant's defense system against pathogens and insects. Let's look at zinc deficiency in your plants. First of all, chlorosis of the leaves will happen. Yellowing first on the yellow, uh, on the lower leaves, and then working its way up. And then your leaves will turn brown spots, and then a lot of browning will happen. Eventually, they will fall off, starting with the bottom leaves. Bronzing of the leaves will also happen. Stunting of the plant's growth overall. And also dwarf leaves with chlorosis. Here are some organic and natural sources of zinc. Zinc sulfate, Epsom salt. One of my favorites, once again, azomite, because it has a lot of trace minerals in it. And also a mineral-rich compost is a good one, a natural one to put zinc into your plant. What are the functions of thiobacillus dioxidin, mobilizer of sulfur, and zinc? It's used in environmental cleanups in a process called bioleaching, cleaning up polluted lands. Also, it's good for your plants, roots, and bacteria by excreting acids that helps regulate the pH to about a 6.5 to a 7, which microbes thrive in. It helps increase nutrient uptake by doing this of other plant nutrients, therefore creating a larger plant that's healthier with overall size and yield and biomass. It also plays a part in suppressing root pathogens by excreting, once again, enzymes and acids that discourage pathogen colonization. It also helps provide plant hormones and organic enzymes that promote new shoot growth and secondary root growth. 
Another great thing that it does, it helps take fixed carbon out of the air and puts it into your soil that your plant needs. And finally, what it does, the most important, it it takes locked up sulfur and zinc that's in your soil and helps make it available to your plant. And one last thing that it does, it helps fix nitrate. It is a nitrate fixer to a certain extent. And so as you can see, this does amazing things. And this bacteria is in all our inoculants here at earthmansoil.com. And that's what we aim to give you is living soil. So check us out at our website. And I hope this video helps you understand a little bit more about growth promoting bacteria. God bless you guys. And I hope you have a great day.